I feel like a midget sitting next to this thing. Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're gonna to take a look at this beast of an integrated amplifier, the Hegel H590. So please sit back, relax, and we're gonna take a close look at it. So the Hegel H590 sat at the top of the Hegel line. It has been discontinued for 2024, um, and it is on closeout at Home Audio. The folks that were kind enough to let me borrow this one, I'll put a link to their store in the video description. They have several on stock. It's discounted off the $11,000 retail price. Check with them for that. So this thing is a beast. It is a real monster. It is full featured. It is 300 watts a channel by two into eight ohms. I couldn't find a four ohm rating for it. If I do, I'll put something down here. Um, it is stable into two ohms, so I imagine it's gonna give a really good power increase into a four ohm load. Um, it also is very high current design, and when we open it up and look inside, you'll see how it's built. It's quite remarkable. It does have an internal deck. It is based on the ESS Sabre 9018K2M chip. Um, and it has lots of goes in and goes out as and we'll look at the back on that. Frequency response is from 10 hertz to 180,000 hertz, and it has an extraordinarily high damping factor. The manufacturer claims 4,000. I'm not sure how they rate that. I'm not sure how anybody rates damping factor. There is no accepted marketing standard like there is for watts per channel for damping. Um, the AES, the Audio Engineering Society, does uh, have a formula for calculating damping, but it's not required and it's not necessarily standardized. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to spin this thing around, take a look at the back, and then we're going to talk about how it sounds. As you can see, looking at the back side of the Hegel H590, it's really well constructed, big, heavy duty binding posts. Starting on this end, it has a fixed level out for a recording device. It has a variable level out if you want to use this as a preamp or feed a subwoofer, which is what I did. There are two sets of balanced analog inputs, three sets of single ended analog inputs. This is a digital out on BNC SPDIF. This is a digital in SPDIF on BNC, SPDIF coax, three Toslink inputs, a USB B and an RJ45 jack. Now, when plugged into your network, this is Rune ready. It is Apple AirPlay compatible. It is Spotify Connect and UPnP DLNA compatible. So you can see a very full featured unit, really well constructed, super heavy duty. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna crack, crack it open, take a look on the inside, and we'll come back and talk about how it sounds. Well, as you can see from looking inside the Hegel H590, it is really well constructed. Large toroidal uh, transformer. I believe it is a dual winding. So we've got a left and right channel. So basically like dual mono, certainly the output stages are set up that way, left and right. There are 12 8,200 microfarad capacitors for a total of 98,400 if I did my math right. All the other capacitors that aren't branded Hegel, these are branded Hegel, are all Rubicon, so very good high quality stuff. Your DAC board is here and I th believe it has its own toroidal power supply. And down here buried underneath is another toroidal power supply, which I believe is for the preamp section. So again, isolated power supplies. Even the binding posts are solid copper. 12 output devices per channel. Now, apparently, I've been able to ascertain that into a low impedance load, potentially this can put out a total of two kilowatts. That's just remarkable. So very well constructed, super good attention to detail. You know, we talk, I've talked about surface mount uh, technology being fine for DAC boards, all of the other stuff, all the output stages, everything else is all through hole which I believe is the best construction quality for a dynamic high current amplifier. Let's button this thing up and we'll go talk about the sound quality. So as you can see from looking inside the Hegel H590, it is well built. It is a real monster, 12 output devices per channel. I haven't seen anything like that in a long time. Personally, I haven't seen anything like that since, you know, Krell and Threshold and Mark Levinson back in the day for me. Just beautifully built and wonderfully uh, executed. And hopefully you think this video is well executed. I'm sorry, that's a bad segue. If you do, I would appreciate your like and subscribe. So how did I test this? For the most part, I used the big Wharfdales because I felt that they could help me suss out better the detail and the power of this thing because it is 
very powerful. I did use the Elex briefly, the DBR62s, but for the most part, it was the big Wharfdales. And I fed it from a variety of different signal sources. I fed it from my turntable. Because this doesn't have a phono preamp, I did use the Cambridge Alva, excuse me, the Cambridge Alva Duo phono preamp, and it sounded very, very good. And I fed it from a variety of decks, either streaming from Artivana or using the Cambridge Audio MXN10 streamer just as a digital transport feeding the DAC. So of course I fed it from my shit Bifrost. I fed it from the internal DAC, the uh, ESS 9018K2M. I fed it from a really interesting ladder DAC from Hyphaman, the EF400, that's our Himalaya ladder RR DAC. I fed it from the FIO K9 AKM, which uses that AKM 4499 chipset I'm so infatuated with. I fed it from my Gishelli J2S AKM 4499. I fed it from the Gishelli Daisy, which is two AKM 4499s. Um, and I also fed it from the Laid Live Harmony deck that I have in for review. For the most part, I used the Daisy and the Harmony DAC for, for all of my listening. So the first recording I put on was this Taj Mahal recording from 1967 as his debut album. And it is just wonderful. You can hear even early on the amount of talent this fella has. Great voice, great guitar playing, but it is limited by the fact that it was recorded in 1967. So it is 60s, 1960s recording technology. It's very mid-rangey, and that's one of the reasons why I chose it. Not a lot of bass, not a lot of high end, and a very forward recording kind of that 60s wall of sound sort of thing. But the thing I found engaging about it was, and I believe all of the musicians were in the studio at the same time, because I got the sense that some instruments were bleeding over into other instruments, microphones, which I think adds a sense of realism, which is just wonderful. So because it is mid-range centric, it helped me kind of figure out how this thing is on mid-range. Very good detail. We'll talk about it in the summation. For a more full range recording, but along the same lines, that kind of gritty bluesy sort of uh, sound quality. I use this recording from Joan Osborne from the album Relish. It's very, very good, very well done, and much more modern. So a very excellent, well-produced studio album, great bass, great drums, everything mic'd properly, everything mixed very well. And my favorite recording on it, by the way, is The Man in the Long Black Coat. You could hear her voice very good. She has a ton of character. She's got a great range, very textured. It was very interesting. But you could also hear, I think, on some of the recordings, it sounded to me like they had, had put a little little bit too much reverb on her voice. And I thought that was interesting. I had not noticed that before. So that was fun. Now to change it up completely and go something completely different than all of that, I plugged in the Daisy DAC and I ran this recording from Zero Cult called Imagine Paradox, which is that crazy electronica stuff that I love that house music or whatever they call it. Um, anyway, so a lot of bass and a lot of energy and a lot of things going on. And I realized that the imaging is manufactured in the studio, but this thing would wrap around you almost to 180 degrees from my seating position and up and down and back and forth and all over the place. It was so much fun. I love it. And great bass. And when it came to delivering bass, this thing did it like it was nothing. No, no hassle at all. It you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that sense of power. If you've ever driven an old American car with a big V8 engine and you're doing 65 on the highway and you just know it's not working. The tack is at like 1400 RPM and it's just got all the power in the world left to give. That's how this thing sounds. But unlike that big American car, this will accelerate almost instantly. It's so fast. Very great delivery on the low base. Now, to really suss out an honest image, I use this recording from Sir Simon Rattle in the Berlin Philharmonic, Bruckner's Ninth Symphony. Now, in most symphony recordings, the microphones are placed way up high on stands above the conductor and aiming into the orchestra. So they're higher up than normal. Or sometimes they're actually slightly overhead. So the image can be violins, first violin, low, timpanis and other instruments higher but back. So it just depends on the recording. Now, this recording was done, I think, in a more conventional way with the microphones up high, about level with where uh, the front of the stage would be. So great depth. The image was marvelous. Um, and again, it just the inner detail provided that, you know, the Bruckner's Night starts out very quietly and you could hear all of the detail. You could hear the notes decay even at a low volume level. That was impressive. And as it built toward the crescendo, this thing just had all the power in the world to give it, give <clears throat> you whatever you needed to, to reproduce these sound accurately. So it was marvelous. So as it built, the crescendos were wonderful. I felt like there was no limit to the transients and they would just go until there was, I mean, that recording ran out of steam long before the amplifier ran out of steam. And then the decay of those transients 
was just so beautifully rendered and so natural and so just detailed. And, and there was a lot of nuance in that. And I found that to be really, really engaging. So let's talk about the, the, the overall sonic characteristics. This. Soundstage is excellent. Wide on the on all the recordings, excellent lock center, good depth, good image placement or Im instrument placement within the image. Um, I thought it did a better job of locating instruments because I did listen to some classical music through the Gishelli. It does better on bass um, than the Art R decks typically do, but it's not as laser focused on on instrument placement. Um, it's more kind of you. All right, that's sort of where it is, and I could draw a little circle around it, not pinpoint, but still very great. So excellent imaging. Great width, great height, great center, great depth, great instrument placement. All of those things are wonderful. But the sonic character of the, characteristic of this is not what I prefer. I like smooth and warm, but the, I will tell you something interesting. So on the low end, base delivery, just effortless. Doesn't matter. It's a powerhouse. It's a nuclear reactor. It just keeps giving. Never runs out of steam. Same through the mid base, same through the lower mid range. But once you started getting into the mid range, upper mid range, and into the high frequencies, <clears throat> this rides the line, the neutral line above the line in cool. Now, I talked about the Orchard Audio amp being a straight wire with gain. It is a sterile amplifier, and that's not a criticism. It's just whatever you plug into it's what you're going to get out of it. It has no sonic character. This does have a sonic character. It is very clinical. So it's very, very detail-oriented. Not bright, not strident, not fatiguing, but not warm. It's a, just, it's cool, maybe a little above cool, not cold, but very, very detailed, very clinical, and all the way up through the mid range. Now, I've heard some people say that the Hegel Sonic signature is warm on the top end. I didn't find that to be the case. I found it to be very neutral, if just less cool than the mid range, but just slightly cool, but still very clinical. All the detail was resolved in the crescendos. The transients were just unlimited, and the decays were beautiful, and everything was revealed. Just did a lovely job. So you got a great sense of space and a great sense of air and all of those other things. So again, not being my sound signature, this is the curious thing. I set it up, sat down, I plugged it in. I was running some music through it. I was going to let it warm up before I really kind of sat down to do my pre-review listening. And I was on my phone doing something. And I think maybe five or 10 minutes into that session, this thing grabbed me by the scruff of the neck and it pulled me in. It's a dichotomy. It's not my sound signature, but oh my goodness, was it engaging. And I think one of the things that was so engaging about it was its presentation on every frequency from zero hertz to wherever. It's just so effortless. There was just never any sense of strain to it at all. A remarkable piece of kit, no question about it. Highly, highly recommended if you have the means to afford something like this. So that's the review of the Hegel H590. Again, thank you to Home Audio here in Chicago for loaning me the unit. There will be a link to their webpage in the video description. And if you like the video, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the video window. There is also a, a link to join the channel in the pin description and in the video description. And in the video description are some Amazon affiliate links. You know the drill on those. My playlists are there. There will be links to the albums that I talked about. There'll be title links. And if I can find a Spotify link, I will um, to those albums. Uh, and also, I, I've been asking you guys to send playlists. You've done a great job. I'd appreciate it if you continue to do so. That's a wonderful thing. And the page is filling out nicely with all those playlists. And I encourage everyone to go visit that. Um, I think, let's see, like, subscribe, comment. Please comment. I love the comments. Uh, if you want, you can follow me on Instagram. I think I've run out of things to say. Isn't that remarkable? Wow. I'm Ed Holman. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. It's now your job to go listen to some beautiful music, maybe on a nuclear reactor of an amplifier. Thank you so very much for your time. 